Well, clearly I haven't been punished enough, so I'm going to try making another one of these using suggestions from people who responded to my previous video. Hello fellow CNC nuts and welcome. What a great response I had to my last video on cutting aluminium, or probably in my case, butchering it. While I ultimately ended up with what I wanted, I wasn't happy with how I got to that point. And thanks to all of those who made comments and told me of your experience cutting aluminium and how you went about it. Now, after reading the comments, I decided that I should give this another go and see if I can't improve on my cutting technique. Now the first problem was I used a three flute cutter because I couldn't find a two flute one. The only one I knew I had um, was a bit beyond the pale. I wouldn't even attempt it. But as it turned out, I actually had this one here. This one here is a sample one I got given and it's a, um, a Chipex one. It's a solid carbide two flute six millimeter cutter. So I thought I'll use that. I'd actually forgotten I had it, which is why I didn't use it in the first place. Now, the other thing was the air assist was uh, touted as a great option. And while I originally thought of it when I did my original research, I didn't like the idea of blowing chips all over the place. But um, I thought I'll give it a try and see what happens. As it turns out, I was wrong. It doesn't blow chips all over the place. It simply blows a nice small stream of cool air onto the cutter, keep it cool to cool down those chips, blow away the chips from the cutting area so I'm not recutting them, and keeping that cutter cool. If the chips, the problem is when the chips are hot, they become very sticky, they stick to the flutes of the cutter, and it's all over after that. So let's have a look at the new improved setup. Well, I've got my box back, put back in place here with the plastic around it. And uh, I've added this little piece of aluminium here to the side of my router. And then I've included this ear line here, one of the adjustable nozzles used for coolants or ear or what have you. And I've just made it so it simply plugs in. I'm running a very, very small amount of ear onto this cutter here. I'm keeping this as close as possible or at least as close as reasonable. And you can see that it's blown all the chips out of this cutting area here. They're being piled up in corners. That's not a problem around surrounding areas as well. I've plugged in the air, you can hear the air blowing. And if I just move it across here, you can see it's enough to blow these chips around the place. So there's definitely a good little stream of air there. I've raised the sides up on the plastic here to try and contain the chips, and it seems to be working. It's really just staying within this area here, which is just ideal. At the front, I've just folded the front up, and I've just been putting a cardboard box here to stop the chips from coming forward. And it's working really well. So let's have a look at it cutting. And here we have the finished result, and it came out really well. This was a pleasure to cut. This was a chore. That air assist made all the difference in the world. Now this one's slightly different. I swapped over the 18 and the 12 step positions on this one here. 
Now, just because it cut nicely doesn't actually mean I want to make any more of them. Now, one of my problems, or one of the perceived problems I had with the air assist was it was going to blow aluminium chips all over the place. But it turns out that's not the case at all. I only used a small amount of air, and it was all contained by the plastic sheeting here, so that was just great. Now, I also changed from that two flute, uh, from the three flute to the two flute cutter, but I kept my speeds and feeds the same. So that was 30 inches per minute and 8,000 RPM. One of my subscribers recommended 20 inches a minute or 19 inches a minute, but I tried that and then I thought, well, I'll just see if it goes, works just as well any faster and it seems to make no difference. So that's pretty good. Now, I also did check on the US Tools app that I mentioned in a previous episode on feeds and speeds. It was recommending about 80 inches per minute but I didn't really feel like winding it up that fast. Though at one point I did accidentally run it at 60, and it did seem to cut okay as well, but I thought I'd better not push my luck. So when it comes to cutting aluminium, I think uh, adding at the very minimum air assistance to cool the cutter down and blow those chips away is a well worthwhile thing to add. Well, that's the update here on cutting aluminium. Uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to join me next time when I will explain what this is all about. And for those of you who have guessed that it is a tool setting guide, you're 100% right. It's pretty obvious, really. Okay, well, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and join me next time when I will get round to showing you what it's all about. Okay, cheers.